Yes, hello, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV uh, with Karen again. Um, back for some more stretching, which we're going to call loosely disguised yoga. It's going to be about a half an hour uh, session. Um, we'll start in a couple of minutes. We'll just give the world time to tune in. Um, but yes, uh, 30 minutes of fairly, let's call it fairly easy yoga for people who don't do yoga, um, but we'll also call it stretching for catamaran sailors. Um, just a bit of camera position there. Hope everybody's doing well wherever it is that you are and you're staying healthy and entertained and uh, well fed and watered at this time when such things are very important. Are you happy with the position of the camera, dear? I think it looks good. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, of course, once we begin the session, there won't be any time for us to answer any of the live comments uh, that are being made. Neither should you be making live comments because you should be on the floor getting stretched. Oh, we had one thumbs up, but that's just been removed. <laughs> that's, that's where we are just now. All right, so um, like last week, you're gonna need some, this is what you're gonna need. I think Karen is gonna hold up the various things. You're gonna need some sort of block um, or a breeze block, a house brick, a Bible, um, or other religious reading materials. Um, some sort of belt. We didn't use the belt. I don't think we used the belt last week. Um, but maybe we will today. And recommended is no shoes. Bare feet is, uh, is what is recommended for this. And a st I, th I think um, <laughs> you just have to run what you've brung. Um, so there we go. All right. We, we've... So I think, yeah, we'll just give it one minute. So uh, just leave you to get in the zone. Uh, maybe just nip to the loo quickly if you need to. I think that's a good idea. That is a good idea. It's a good idea. Yeah, um, and there we are. So, yeah, uh, yeah, there we are. Mm. Okay, let's, uh, I think let's crack on. Let's crack on. Okay. We'll need the two bricks. We're going to move the brick near the front of the mat, ready. There's one here. No, I'm just standing here ready. And that one. Cool. Okay, so we're going to start today's session standing up. So, we were looking a lot today at shoulders, hips, um, and some hamstring work, the backs of your legs. So, starting off, if you take your hands and interlock them and just pop them on the top of the head, try not to press the hands onto the head too much, and then turn the palms up and press your palms up towards the sky. So, it's like you're going to suck your upper arm bones towards your ears, but try and drop the shoulders down. And then spin the little finger side of the hand back to the wall or whatever's behind you. And just take a couple of breaths here. Notice if you're sticking your chest and your bottom out. And try and just lengthen the tail down. And just breathe deep here. Another breath. And then exhale and release the arms. Bring the hands in front again and take the other finger in front. The one that feels less comfortable. Bring it on top of the head. Again, turn the palms up and press the palms up to the sky. And just turn the little finger side of the hand back a bit again. Draw the arm bones towards your ears. If this is uncomfortable in your shoulders, you could take the arms wide and just press the heel of the hand up. So you're getting a little bit into the wrist flexors here and extensors, extenders, okay? And just breathe that, tail dropping. Keep feeling like you're sucking the arm bones to each other. And then exhale, release, and give your shoulders a bit of a roll out. Then bring the arms out in front, cross the right arm over the left, and bring the backs of the hands, palms of the hands together. So the elbows go forwards, fingers go up. <laughs> not quite got that one. Or if, like Joe, you're not quite managing it, you can bring the right arm over in front of you and take the forearm of your hand and just drop the shoulder down and just breathe here. So this is just going to get a little bit around the outer shoulder and down the spine of the shoulder blade. So just a couple of breaths.
breath just easing out into that area. And then release, open the arms, just give them a moment to roll out. And then the same, you can take the arms out in front, try crossing left over right, bringing the hands or the palms together, elbows forwards, fingers up. Or if there's some shoulder stuff going on, just have the arms straight again, drop the shoulder and breathe into that space. Nice, easy breath. And then exhale, release, roll out the shoulders, bring the arms up, I'm just going to take a step forward from you, and then keep the tail long, the crown lifted, and press the elbow tips back. So it's like you're in a cactus shape, and you're really trying to press the elbow tips back. And you should feel a nice stretch across the chest. Nice, easy breath. Then exhale here, bring the hands around behind you and interlock the fingers. So I'll turn around so you can see. If this is too much, this is where the belt comes in quite handy. You can hold the belt. And then I want you to bend your knees quite deeply. So you're going to bend down into sort of squat position. Lift the arms back behind you. Keep the chin in, take an inhale. And exhale, bring your belly towards your thighs. Drop everything out of the head and just let the arms follow you. So from here, once you're in, you can keep the right leg bent and try and straighten the left leg. If you can, take a breath. And from there, you can roll that right shoulder open a little. So it's like you're bringing the arms to that side slightly. Then inhale back to centre, bend both knees. Exhale and straighten the left leg and roll the left shoulder out a bit. And breathe there. Remember the belts there if you need it. Then bend both the knees, reach the arms high behind you and just pull yourself back up to stand in. So inhale and come up. And exhale, release the arms, just give the shoulders a roll out. Good. Come to the front of the mat and just step your feet together. So you're going to take some half sun salutations. So I'll just talk Joe through this. So have your feet together if you feel more flexible in the hamstrings. If you're less flexible, have the feet hip distance apart. Hands at prayer position. Take an inhale, reach your arms wide. And as you exhale, fold forwards to your forward bend. So like you did last time, bend the knees, bring the belly to your thighs, drop the head, hands to the legs. Then press the hands to the legs, inhale, reach your heart forward so that you're lengthening the front of your spine. And exhale, drop back in. Keep the knees slightly bent. Try and press to your heels. Reach your arms wide and inhale, come up to standing. And then exhale, hands through centre. So this is just warming up a bit. Inhale, reach wide and look up. And exhaling, fold and pause. Bending knees as much as you need to as you do it. Inhale, press the hands to the legs. Reach the heart forward. You might need to come quite high on your legs. And then exhale, fold back in. Inhale, reach wide, keep the back nice and long, use your abdominal muscles to bring you up. And exhale, hands through centre. Last time, inhale, reach up. And exhale, fold it forwards, forward bend. So we're coming from the hips, so bend the knees if you need to a bit. Inhale, reach the heart forwards. Exhale, fold back in, drop the head, let everything come out the crown. Inhale, reach wide and come up. Look to your thumbs and exhale, hands through centre. Just take a breath and then step the feet hip distance apart, so stay there. But just have the feet hip distance. Take an inhale, reach both arms up and then take the right wrist with your left hand and start to come over towards the left a little. So you want to keep the weight in the right foot and you're just starting to make a bit of a banana shape through the upper body. Stretching out the side body. Inhale, back to centre. Exhale, take the hand, the other wrist with your hand. Take an inhale, reach up, press the left heel down. And exhale over to that side. So really breathe down through your ribs into the hip space. Inhale, back to centre. And exhale, release. Bring the feet and hands together again if that's comfortable or keep them hip distance apart. Take an inhale, reach wide and look up. And exhaling, fold forwards to your forward bend. Bending knees as you need to. Inhale, hands to shins, reach the heart forwards. And exhale, step the right leg back. 
And we're going to find a runner's lunge position. So this is where the blocks might be useful. You can put blocks under your hands. Otherwise, hands are on the mat. Okay, and from here, drop that front knee so it's over the ankle, but not in front. Keep pressing this back thigh up. Let the hips drop a little. Feel the breath here. Inhale. And then exhale, step to plank. So you can come off the blocks. Take an inhale. At plank. Good. Make sure you are in plank. And then exhale, knees down, just to take it a bit easier. And as you lower to the mat, try and bring your heart in front of your hands. Keep your elbows in. From here, bring the tops of the feet to the floor. And then bring the hands behind your back and interlock your hands. Press the, head, the hands towards your heels, roll the heads of the shoulders back, and as you inhale, lift your right leg from the mat, keep it straight, and spread the toes. Do the same with the left leg, and then lift the heart center a little. Take an inhale, and then exhale, lower back down. Release the hands, release the feet. Bring the hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale back up to half plank. And then exhale to a child's pose. So you sit the bottom back towards your heels. If you need to, you can pop a pillow between your heels and your bottom here. Just take a moment, take a breath. And then inhale, come up to all fours. And exhale, tuck the toes under. And come back to a down dog. So we're just going to take the feet as wide as your mat. So a bit wider than your hips. And this time I want you to turn your toes in a bit from your heels and let the heels go out a little bit. And then release the right heel down to the mat so you're straightening the right leg. Keep pressing both heels down, breathe deeply. And then bend the right leg and extend the left heel down so you start to straighten the back of the left leg. Take another breath. And then you inhale, look forwards, and you can step the right foot up between the hands. You might need to bring the back knee down to do it. Again, you can use blocks here so you've not put too much pressure through the chest. And then you lift the back knee from the mat, and you find your lunge on this side. So hips are dropped, but this back leg is really active with drawing that inner thigh up and pressing our heel back. Taking a breath, feeling heart center and collarbones nice and broad. And then step the back foot up to the front of the mat, feet hip distance apart. Take an inhale, exhale, fold down to the forward bend. Bend the knees slightly, inhale, reach wide, come up to standing, look to your thumbs. And exhale, hands come back. Good, inhaling, we reach up again. Exhaling, folding forwards, bending knees if we need to. We don't want to feel it in our back. Hands to the legs, inhale, press the heart forwards, long front spine. Exhale, bring the hands down and step the left leg back. Coming into a lunge. But this time we're going to drop the back knee to the mat. Okay, surf the inner thighs to each other. <coughs> Excuse me. And as you inhale, come up, bring your hands to your front knee both hands, and then just lift your hip points a little here. Keep the tail drop down, and then raise the arms up. Raise the arms up. <laughs> <laughs> Speak Greek, maybe understand a bit better. And then drop the shoulders, and really spread the fingers, and breathe. So again, we don't want to press forwards, so let me just press you forwards, and collapse here. You want to feel that you're still lifted, take the hip bones lifted and tail long. A little bit of engagement at the abdomen. And then exhale the hands down. We step to a plank or a half plank. And then we lower down to the mat. Half plank if you're not very strong in your core. Make sure heart's open. And this time cobra. So hands can stay where they are or you can bring them a little forwards under the shoulders. And we're going to come up in a moment into a cobra. So I'll show you the arm positions. So more advanced is to have the hands back beside the chest. If you're a little less flexible, hands just in front of the shoulders. Or if you feel you've got some back stuff going on, you can bring the forearm 
arms to the mat, bring the forearms to the mat. And then bring the elbows in line with your middle finger, in line with the shoulder. So this is called sphinx posture. Press the tops of your feet down, keep the tail long towards your heels. And then it's like you're dragging the earth to you as you inhale and open the heart up. And then we exhale back down. So then just to go over cobra, lower to the mat. Bring your hands under your shoulders. Keep the elbows slightly in. Again, same action with the legs. So we really press the feet down. It's like the kneecaps have lifted from the mat. Tail is long. And we keep that active as we inhale and roll up. We want to keep the shoulders down. Elbows in as much as we can. Crown of the head just lifted. Chin nice and neutral, back of the neck long. And then we exhale, release down to the mat. And slowly come back to your down dog. So you can always wait at the child's pose, which was before, in between the down dog and the back bend. Or we can just go straight back to down dog if we feel okay. So in the down dog, we want to lift the front of our ribs a little towards the back ribs. Press down through our hands, roll the armpits in. If you find it difficult, come down onto your knees for me. You can turn the fingers out a bit, so you have the thumb and the first finger, that space between, pointing more to the top edge of your mat. That can help if we've got stuff in our shoulders. So coming back up to your down dog, and you breathe back. And just nod the head yes a couple of times. Shake the head no. Open the jaw a bit. And then again, really focus on this long spine. Really press the hips back and up. Bend the knees as you need to. Then inhaling, we're going to step the left foot up to the front of the mat. Drop the back knee down. Make sure the foot comes up between the hands. So you don't want to end up with this position where the ankle's back behind the knee. Do take a moment. And then lift your hips, bring your hands to your front knee. Lift those bony bits of your hips and inhale, reach the arms up. If you can see, but I've got Harry here just tickling my feet while I'm teaching. So just breathe deep here. Go, keep the shoulders soft, really press up through your fingers, press your back foot down, suck the inner thighs to each other, and then exhale, hands down. Step your back foot up, bring your feet hip distance apart, take the inhale, lengthen your front body, and exhale, fold down. And then just take the elbows here, so you're in a forward bend, like a red dog pose, so you're holding the elbows, head drop. And then bend the knees a bit. See if you can bring your belly a bit more to your sides. Drop everything out the head again. And then see about lengthening the legs from there. So pressing into the backs of the legs and straightening from there. So we don't bounce when we stretch. We use the breath. So the inhale, belly expands and it almost makes you a bit longer in the front body. And then exhaling, belly draws back, and that's where we can soften a bit deeper in. And then you can just sway a little, like you're making semicircles around the front of your feet. And feel all that tension around the top of your sit bones, around the hamstrings. Thank you, Harry. And then exhale, release, drop the arms. Bend the knees and just roll yourself up to standing. So like your head's going to come up last. And roll out your shoulders. Good. And you can step and face the wider side of your mat. And bring your feet wide. Good. Okay, from here, take the right foot to 90 degrees. And bring the back toes in a bit from the back heel. Yeah. So we want to make sure the back toes come in a bit so it protects this back knee. So take this heel out a bit and jump. Bend your right knee. And then check the knees on top of the ankle. So Joe needs to go a bit wider here with his stance. Take your foot further forwards. Good, then bring your arms wide. So this is what we call Virabhadrasana 2. So this one, we think about space across the heart center. We lift our hip points. We don't want to feel like we're collapsed in the back. Those bony bits on our hips lift a bit. The tail just drops down. 
the front knee as much as you can traps to the middle or small toe. And we're super active in this back leg, the thigh lifts. We've got a bit of stretch to the groin area and the inner thighs. Then we exhale back hand to back leg. And you're going to reach this top arm up. Keep pressing this front knee down and forwards. And we should feel, I'm going to not touch Joe because it'll make him really ticklish, down this side body that you've got a real length from your armpit to your hip. In fact, from the fingers to the hip. And then exhale, bring that elbow towards the front thigh. And we're going to take a side bend. So you reach the top arm up. Now, if shoulder's a problem, you can keep the top arm just on your um, top side of your body. But if your shoulder's okay, reach that top arm up. Keep the shoulder nice and soft. And if it feels comfortable, you can reach it over to the wall in front of you. Now, as you do this, same thing's happening with your legs, but you're just spinning the heart center up. And we've got this long length now to this side of the body. Before it was the right side, and now you've got the left side opening more. And then I want you to inhale, come back up, and exhale, hands to hips. Turn the toes forwards. Take the heels a bit wider than the toes. Maybe you need to bring the feet in a little if you're a bit less flexible in the inner sides of your legs and the backs of your legs. Bend your knees. Take an inhale, open the heart up towards the sky. And then exhale, fold forwards. So it's like belly's coming through first, then the chest, then the head. You can bring the hands to the floor if they reach or leave the hands on the hips. Then from there, if your back feels okay, you can straighten the legs. So you can press into the legs, hips are lifted, and you draw down through the outside edges of your feet. You spread your toes, the instep, instep, insteps of your feet are lifting as much as you can, and you feel the stretch down the back of the legs, and you breathe. So everything just drops out the head. Easy breath. Then we bring the hands to the hips. You can inhale to look forwards. Exhale, hands to hips. Bend the knees. Press into the feet and come up. Good. Take the left foot to 90 degrees. You can do the same on this side. Bend your front knee. Just shuffle the foot forwards if you need to, if you shortened your stance before. So you want that knee above the ankle. Spread the arms wide, take the in-breath, and just breathe here. Drop the shoulders. Feel that you're really active through these arms, really stretching to the fingers. The triceps are coming, the back of your arms are coming towards your arm bones, but we keep the shoulders down. Hips are lifted, space in the groins on the inner thigh of the front leg. And then exhale, back hand to back leg, and we reach the left arm up to the sky. And again, we just stretch through this side. If it's in your range of movement, you can slide this hand down your leg and take what we call a reverse warrior, where you come into a bit of a back bend. But for the moment, I would stay here and just think about the length from fingers to hip and keep dropping into this front thigh. Then exhale, elbow to thigh, and reach the top arm up and take it over. So just to show you one of the escape valves that happen in this, is that we sometimes stick the bottom out and reach forwards. If that's happening, just try not to go quite so far. Maybe you want to just think about extending crown towards the wall in front of you and tail coming back to the wall behind you and then just tuck the tail slightly into the pubic bone. The lower shoulder can get a little bit tight, so soften that space. Try not to collapse down. And then inhale, come up. And exhale, turn the toes forwards, heels wider. So again, you might want to heel toe your feet in. Interlock the hands behind you like you did before. Again, use a belt if you need to. And then we inhale, press the upper arm bones to each other. And if it's comfortable, the heel of the hands. And then exhaling, fold forwards. So again, bend the knees if you need to through the feet, and then just let the arms follow you here. Now, if there's some shoulder stuff going on and it's 
not happy, hands on your sacrum, elbows up towards the ceiling, and going from there. And you just stay with the breath, feel that length in the back of your legs. And then we use the arms strongly to bring us up. So as you inhale, you really press the hands up and come up. And roll out the shoulders. If you feel a bit dizzy, sometimes it happens when you're doing a forward bend, just look to the floor. <laughs> Okay, and then just roll the shoulders back, step your feet in, give your feet a bit of a wiggle out. Okay, and then take your feet wide again. You're going to take a high lunge or a rear of a dress number one. So I'll show you, um, just not sure if Joe's done this one before. So right foot to 90. Yeah. And then you're going to either keep this back foot down and make sure you've not crossed the feet because that makes balance quite challenging. So the back foot, again, the toes turn in a good 60 degrees. Or if you've got some knee stuff happening, you might want to come onto the ball of that back foot with the heel up. Bend from the right leg. So we're going to try and bring our hips forwards. So I would generally say, to start with, heel up is more helpful. We want to try and be as active as we can in the back leg, and then inhale, reach our arms up to the sky. So if we feel it in the back, bring yourself forwards a bit here. Let the tail drop. We stretch through the ring finger. If the back feels okay and the hips are open enough, you can come up more upright. Okay, then exhale, hands to your hips and straighten the front leg. Okay, step the back foot up about a third. And then again, check you've not crossed your feet. Hands on your hips. And then we inhale, and exhale, fold over the front leg. So maybe you can only just go a little way, that's fine. Maybe you get to parallel, that's fine too. Or maybe you've got more flexibility in the hamstrings, and you can lie over the front leg and have your nose on your knee. It really doesn't matter where you are. Just stay with your body and make sure you're not pushing anything. So any twinges, any feedback from the body where you're getting nervy pain or bone on bone sort of feeling, you're at your maximum, you want to come back. Okay, body's giving you some um, tips that it's not happy. Okay, so from here, elbows are up. We keep that right hip back a little, left hip draws forwards a little. We keep breathing. And then we bend the front knee, come up on our in breath and turn and face the other side. So we're going to do the same little sequence on this side. So left foot to 90, we come onto the ball of the back foot and bend the left knee. Tricky, a bit challenging on the balance. And we suck the thigh to the thigh bone. Rose up the arms as you breathe in. And just feel again here the length from the fingers down this back hip towards the back foot. Strong that leg as much as you can. And again, if it's in the back, we don't want it there. So you can bring your chest forwards if you need to. Okay, then exhale, hands to hips. Straighten the front leg. Bring the back heel down to the mat. Make sure your legs aren't crossed. Shorten the stance a bit. Take an inhale. And exhale, fold forwards over the leg. So again, we're just bringing the chest more over that front leg. You want to lift the left hip a bit, feel the right hip draw forwards a bit, feel that connection in the front foot, really spread the toes, and feel that you're pressing that back foot down as much as you can. Watch the back of the neck, make sure it feels like all four sides of your neck have length. And then bend the front knee, inhale, make your way back up, and release. Turn to face the wide edge of the mat. Okay, and then heels a bit wider, toes in. Take an inhale, and exhale, fold forwards. So from here, you're going to bring your hands down to the floor if you can. Bend your right knee, okay, and take the right hand further forwards. Bring the left hand underneath the right arm, and hold the outside of the shin towards the top, towards the knee. 
Okay, from here, you're going to start to straighten this right leg as much as is comfortable, as if you're bringing the elbow more towards the mat. So you start to come into a twist. So you're looking under this right arm, straightening the right leg, drawing left elbow down towards the mat. And then exhale, release. Bring your hands back down. Bend your left leg. Bring your left hand out in front. And then thread the right arm underneath. Bring it to the outside of the shin if you can, out of the thigh if you can't reach. And then slowly start to straighten the left leg and press this elbow towards the mat as you look under the left arm and you breathe here. So it's a twisted forward bend a little. And then inhale back to centre, hands come down. And exhale, hands to hips and come up on the inhale. Good, so last couple of postures. Just step the feet wider than the hips. Now this one can be a bit challenging if you've got some Achilles stuff or tight calves going on. So if it's a bit too much for you, there's an option to take a chair posture where you keep the knees in line with your feet and sit your bottom back as if you're sitting on a chair with the heart centre lifted. Hands can stay here if you want to. So this is going to start to get a little bit more towards that sort of trapezing stuff that you have going on, bringing your more into the front of your hips. If it's all too much, you can lie on your back and bring your knees into your chest and you can work here. Otherwise, you're going to come into a squat. So your feet are a little bit wider than your hips, just a little bit wide, too wide. And then turn the toes out from the heels and bend your knees and drop down. Try and keep the heels on the floor if you can, but if it doesn't work for you, you can put a rolled up towel underneath your heels or um, a block if you've got it, or a couple of books. And then just bring your hands to your heart centre and just let your bottom drop down and your head up towards the sky, but you're not sitting on the mat. And you can just rock a little here. This is an exercise Joe does every day. <laughs> and then we exhale, release the right hand down, reach the left arm up, just make a twist. So you look up underneath the arm. And then exhale back, bring the hand to the mat and reach the other arm up and breathe. And then back to centre, take a breath, and exhale, sit back on your bum, and bring your feet together in front of you, with the knees dropping down. Last couple of postures, okay. So sitting nice and tall, and if you feel like you're being pulled into your lower back, like you can't get tall in the lower back, you can take a block, or a book, or whatever it is, and sit your bottom on the block. So this is um, known as bound cobbler pose. So you're holding your feet and you can use your elbows on the inner thighs for a little bit of resistance, like you're pressing your thighs away. Just have a look at your legs while you do it and see if one knee is higher than the other. It just gives you a little bit of indication if there's something going on around one hip. So just go slowly, sitting up might be enough, pressing the legs down, or you can start to fold forwards and imagine that you're trying to bring your head in front of your feet, imagine. And then just keep the shoulders soft as much as you can and use those elbows on the inner thighs just to release a bit into the inner groins, the uh, insides of your thighs. Take a breath, feel the breath all the way down into the back of your body. Exhale it all out the mouth. Another breath. And then come up on the in breath. And then just release the legs, help them in a bit. And take the right leg out to straight. And take the left leg and either leave it where it is, in line with the hip, with the knee up, or you can cross the foot to the outside of the straight leg. Okay, again here, I want you to take an inhale, find that long spine in the lower back, and as you exhale, hug your knee, your bent knee, with your right, elbow, right arm. Bring the other hand behind you. You might need a block here. You can pop it on the floor. So if you've got um, little T-Rex arms, 
and you can't quite reach the floor, you might want to pop a block underneath the hand. Sometimes our arm to torso ratio or leg to torso ratio is, is quite different. So if reaching the floor is a bit difficult, you can use the block. You inhale again and find that length. And as you exhale, start to turn a little more here, drawing that shoulder back behind you and feeling the breath. <laughs> a nice, easy breath. Okay, the straight leg is active still. And then we inhale, we turn back to centre. And exhale, release. And you do the other side. So we cross the leg over if you want to. You stay tall on the inhale. And exhale, start to turn to the bent knee. Hug the knee. Yeah, left arm hugs the knee. And bring the right hand behind you. Yeah, remember, option to build the floor to you if you need to. So you're going to inhale, lengthen up. And exhale and turn. And again, nice, easy breath. Tendency can be to roll the shoulders up here, so we want to keep the shoulders down. Feel that we've got space across the collarbones and the length in the lower back. And then inhaling, turning back to centre. And exhaling, release. Last posture. So you're going to come over onto your back. And you can take what we call a figure four pose to help release the glutes. So you lie on your back. And then I want you to take your right ankle onto your left knee. Okay, and then you can either stay here and just press that right knee away from you with the right hand. You can demonstrate that. Or you can thread the hands through the leg, the bent leg. So you hold around the back of this left leg, interlock the hands, and pull the knee, the leg into you. So you can see here Joe's head's come off the floor. So if he just pulls the leg in, to be able to reach the leg, keeping the head back down on the mat. And then ideally, you want the chin neutral. So if you find that your chin is really reaching back like Joe's is, you might want to take a block behind the head. It's just where you've got some tension around the neck or slightly more developed upper back muscles. Okay, so from here, you're pulling the left leg in, you're pressing the right thigh away with your elbow maybe. And if you can't quite reach it with the elbow, you can pull left leg in with left hand and use the right hand on the right inner thigh or knee to press it away. So you should feel something around the glute. You feel something on the right around the glute. Around the glute. And you breathe there. So you can straighten the left leg up as well. That's an option. And see how that changes the stretch. Sometimes you can get a bit more purchase onto the stretch doing that. <laughs> That's the right word. And you breathe. And then exhale, release. Bring the feet down. And do the other side. So left leg onto, left ankle onto the knee. Hug the knees in before you lift the head. That's it. Yep. And then thread the arms through. Good. So again on this side with Joe, I would say it's better to release the left hand and press the left leg away and pull in here. So I wouldn't ever really put my hands on the, the knee as it's so much. I would use the inner thigh, press away from that. Okay, and you're pulling in, back of right leg, pressing away the left knee. And again, you can straighten the right leg up. And you can just bend that knee in a bit and breathe that. And then exhale, release, bring the knees into your chest, hug your knees. And you can just rock a bit side to side here. Good. And then from there, take the right leg flat to the floor, all the way to the floor. And then put your left foot onto your right thigh. Yeah. And then hold your knee with your right hand, as a right hand. Yeah. And bring the left arm out to the side, palm up. So try and keep the left shoulder anchored to the mat now as much as you can. And you can start to pull the knee over to the right. So you'll get a really nice stretch from the left fingers down the inner arm, down the side body, towards your hip and out towards your knee. So as you draw over here, this shoulder is staying connected, this hip is lengthening away and coming over. 
and we should feel a nice stretch through that side body. Nice stretch. Lovely stretch. And then we come back to centre on the inhale and exhale, release. Do the other side. Good. So again, this leg straight if you can. Foot onto the thigh just helps not pull it in too much. So foot on your thigh if you can, hold here. Yep, and then draw over from that. And again, keep that right shoulder to the mat. Think about that length from the top hip as you draw the leg over. And be nice and easy with your breath. And then inhale, bring it back up. And exhale, hug the knees in. Rock on your back side to side. And then you can either just collapse in a star shape on the floor and just take a few breaths. Or if you need to rush on, you can roll up to seated. And then you have the option to just get on with your day. Thank you very much. Don't stand up too quick. Never a good idea. Okay, so, um, oh, that's Harry, by the way. He's been following the class just to the side uh, throughout. He's been doing excellently. But uh, thanks very much to Karen there for taking us through that procedure. I certainly feel as loose as a goose now and ready to hit the lagers. Um, anyway, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I think if this has been a popular choice we'll do it again next week friday at 5 30 greek time 4 30 central european time uh 3 30 uk time and other times in other places okay so we'll see you next week for some more stretching if not be back on joyrider tv sunday uh at the same time for show us your cat of course um and then some more uh, boat assembly kind of stuff uh, during the week. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>